Ty Whitman, better known in some circles as The Water Sifu, because I'm the creator of The Water Sifu Podcast. The Water Sifu Podcast is a podcast that's aimed at training people to pass the water treatment and water distribution exams. If you're interested in listening to it at all, it's available free in iTunes, in the Blackberry store, or you can just go to the website itself, www.watersifu, spelled S-I-F-U, dot com. There are many common mistakes that people make over and over and over when they're training for water treatment exams. So I thought I'd put together a YouTube video to kind of highlight and explain some of those. I'm limited to 15 minutes here on this YouTube. I don't want to make more than one video with links and so forth. So if you like what you, you hear here, hear here, <laughs> hear here, mighties. <laughs> if you like what you hear here, Go ahead and go over to the website and listen to podcast episode 14. I've done a half hour podcast on this very similar subject. So since time is limited, let's go ahead and get right started. I've got six topics real quickly that I want to cover. The first and almost the most important thing is file for that exam. This sounds really, really simple, but if you don't file for that exam, you can't take it. And I can't really speak for every state across the United States. I've talked to multiple people from multiple states through doing the podcast. But out here in Duke, California and in a number of other states, they have a very similar thing where the filing date is actually very, very far ahead of that actual, actual exam date. Like, for example, for the treatment exam that just passed out here in California, it has a September 1st filing date for the November 19th exam. It's almost two and a half months away. And it's very, very easy to get caught in the rut of thinking exam and realize, oh no, I passed the filing date up, oh well, I'm just going to go ahead and wait for next time down the road and forgetting about it. And then you start thinking exam, 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 and you realize, oh no, I passed the filing date. And I see people do it all the time where I work, and I'm no perfect saint myself. It took me about three or four years of doing that before I finally started testing for these exams. So very, very important. Once you get your requirements in, apply. Apply for that exam. Don't wait for the deadline. As soon as you're ready, apply. That way you're in the queue getting ready to take that exam. The second big mistake I see people think doing is not knowing what they need to study for that exam. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that what they do, specifically people make this mistake on the distribution exam or the distribution side of things more so than the treatment, but a lot of times people think that what they do is all there is in the world of water distribution. For example, people that I know in the maintenance department think that all they need to study are valves and trenching and shoring, uh, safety techniques, things like that, but really there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to things like water quality considerations. There's testing requirements. A good place to go to look for this, the state of California has a website where they have an expected range of knowledge for that exam. If you try to find and go through the, the whole thing to find that particular part, it can be a little difficult. If you do go to my site, go to the links page, and there's a link there that will take you to the state of California site. If you go down to the bottom of that, you'll see a link called Expected Range of Knowledge. And you can print out things that will kind of tell you what you need to cover, and it's pretty much the same across the board. Um, State of California has a distribution 1 through 5. 1 is the beginner, 5 is as high as it goes. So you can kind of go correspondingly to your state and go, you know, 1, beginner, 3, intermediate, 5 is advanced. There's just to give you some ideas of some things that you would need to cover for a distribution exam. This is the printout off their sheet. But you have distribution system operation, which covers all the stuff, uh, valves, meters, hydrants, but it also causes corrosion, flushing. It covers things like wells and all the different terms associated with wells, as well as piping, sources of supply, where you talk about the different characteristics and chemical characteristics of water water quality, uh, hardness, pH, uh, coliform bacteria, uh, pathogenic diseases, different things that can go wrong in the system, calcium magnesium, iron manganese problems, disinfection, chlorination, pumps and motors and everything associated with pumps. So that's just 
an idea, there's a wide variety of things that you'll need to know, be aware of that. The next thing is to use the right material to study. So often people do not use the right material when they're preparing for that exam. So I wanted to show to you, and this is a great thing about this YouTube video that I can't do in my podcast, is to show you what I think are the best books available out there to study. The State of California has a correspondence course uh, through the Sacramento State University that many people use to take the prerequisite uh, courses for the exams. I have a link to the Sacramento State program also on the links page on my site. And they have some books that I think are fantastic for studying for the exam. For the distribution side, it's the Water Distribution System Operation and Maintenance. I don't get any money or kickbacks on this, by the way, just to make it clear. I just think these are the best things to study. So it's by the Office of Water Programs, CS California, the Distribution System Operation and Maintenance. Fantastic. On the treatment side, Water Treatment Plant Operation Volume 1 if you're going for the beginner or the immediate testing. They have a Volume 2 if you're going for advanced testing as well. Also on the treatment side, the AWWA has a really good book. It's kind of a shorter one than that, smaller. It's called the Water Treatment Operator Handbook. Uh, like I said, American Water Works Association. The author on this is Nicholas G. Pizzi, P I Z Z A. And for distribution, I think this book here is a must have. It's called the Water Distribution Operator Training Handbook. It's from the American Water Works Association. These little books are expensive, by the way. They're like 70, 80 bucks. Um, you can buy them used on Amazon cheaper, and that's the way I'd go if I was looking for that. This is Harry Von Huben, H U B E N. Again, the Water Distribution Operator Training Handbook. Fantastic book. Out here in California, for example, you can go all the way through, I would go so far as to say that on the multiple choice part of the exam, you can go all the way through your grade three minimum with just this book alone. It covers a lot of good information. On the math end of it, there's a book here I want to mention, but the math end is a very difficult part for a lot of people. I'm going to kind of cross promote here, not because I'm trying to sell anything, because I really think it's the best product out there for studying. A lot of people have a very, very difficult time with the math. I created a product that has sold pretty well, and I haven't had any negative complaints about it by, by pretty well. I mean, it's a very niche market. It's the people that need it find it really useful. Um, on, it's called Water Math. It's, actually, it's called the Water Math DVD you've been looking for. There's a link to that on the website itself. But what that DVD does is take you from a point where you know nothing about Water Math, and then it brings you to a point where you have not only a good foundation of basic Water Math, but you're getting into the intermediate Water Math spots. There, It leaves you at the intermediate. I'm considering maybe doing an advanced DVD be completely honest with you, the cells aren't super great on it, but it kind of leaves, I'm leaving something open, other subjects that I would like to help people cover. In the meantime, a fantastic book for the math um, is Applied Math for Water Plant Operators by Joanne Kirkpatrick, K-I-R-K-P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Price. There's an actual book that goes with this, and all I ever got was the workbook, and, and <laughs> I didn't know there was a book. I'm not big on the books anyway, um, trying to learn, but there was a workbook and kind of how they solved it at the end. But this is the book I use to practice everything that I needed to practice to get through my Distribution 5 exam out here in California. So, some fantastic books. Um, the other thing to mention is my podcast. It's available for free. It's specifically designed to help train you for the exams. You'd be a fool not to listen to it if you were seriously trying to study for those exams because I've taken these tests and that podcast is designed to train you on exactly what you need to know to prepare for those exams. Now the next thing is to study. Got to check my clock to see what I'm doing on time. The next thing is to study the right way. And I'm a huge fan of flashcards. 
Instead of just having your notes, when you go down your notes, let's say you have definitions, you go down in order and you kind of get used to seeing things in order. And if you studied your notes from definitions, you know you've seen it. You, you'll almost know the next question before you get there. This is some of the flashcards that I've used to stack of these things. And I, I love flashcards because you can add to them as your knowledge base grows. As you're continuing to add and learn more things, you can just add flashcards to it. Also, they're really easy to put away, and then let's say you take the next level of exam, you can pull them out and refresh your memory. Let's say this is my stack of, of flashcards. That would be a hard pile of notes to take around. But with this, you can take one little subject and practice that. And you can take one more little subject, for example, math problems, and practice that. You can add to it as you learn new things, as you begin to become very, very comfortable with things, you can take it away. Take those things out of there so they're not getting in your way. The final thing as far as exam preparation is test yourself to pinpoint weaknesses. The AWWA has some practice exams that they sell. Uh, the Minnesota Rural Water Association has some practice exams for free on their website. There's a link to them on my site as well. As well as these books have practice exams in the back. Always shoot those practice exams because they tell you if you don't know the question, but also they got an A, B, C, D, and those A, B, C, Ds, those are definitions that if you're completely lost, you should know what all those things are. By increasing your knowledge as much as you can, at the very least, if a test comes and you don't know the answer to that exam, you can knock off some of the things. I, don't, I know it's not C, I know it's not D, it's got to be A and B. Kind of like on uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you get the 50-50 shot. The final thing that I want to grill in on you is on test day. Okay, good. I got three minutes left, so I'm going to have to knock this out. On test day, know the location of your exam ahead of time so you're not driving around lost. Eat a very, very good breakfast. You need to have that energy. Bring a water with you to the exam. You can bring that inside. Eat a candy bar right before going in. There's been studies proven that that sugar, unless you're diabetic, don't eat a candy bar, faint in the test. Um, there's been studies proven that that sugar rush will, in the short term, help those neurons fire in your brain and actually help you perform better and help your brain work a little better on the test. And the key thing for people that are not good test takers is keep this in mind. There will be questions you do not know. There will be a page of questions you do not know. Think of the long haul. Take one question at a time and don't let those little periods get to you. Think of it almost like a fight. If you get in a fight, you're going to get hit. You're going to get hurt. But the end result is to come out on top. Okay. So when you go in on to that exam, go in knowing there will be phases that will stump you. When I first tested for my treatment 2 exam, literally I went through the first page, I went through the second page, I was like, I don't know nothing on this exam. I literally flipped open the book to the front cover. I was like, they gave me the wrong exam ended up passing it, okay, and actually doing pretty well on it, and doing better on those first questions than I thought I was going to do. So the bottom line is don't let the rut get you down. Think of the whole problem, and don't be in a rush to finish your exam as well, because you'll see some people finish their exam and walk out. They might have given up. I've known people that said, I didn't do well. I just walked out halfway through the test. Take the full time that's allotted to you. Review your questions. Go over those questions. When you're reviewing them, you might find that the question 71 gives you the answer to question 3. Or you might go, oh my god, that was ridiculous. I made a terrible mistake on that. So, I know I've talked really fast, but I want to give you guys some great ideas and some things that I really think can help you pass the exam. Again, if you've liked this video, go ahead and go to the website and we got about a half hour long podcast that goes over this stuff and a little more detail. I got about twice as long to do it there. So I'm Ty Whitman, the Water Sifu. Good luck on the exam. How do I stop the recording? Get back here, woman, or I beat you. You come help me or I kill you. Press the red button. <laughs>